from MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Oh, in force for the New Year's holiday. What you need to know to stay safe on the highways is coming up next. I'm Joe St. George in Washington. A lot of people are talking about New Year's resolutions. We're talking about political predictions for 2023. What should you talk about at your New Year's party? Next. Oh, well, that was fun. That wouldn't work for me. <laughs> no. In the 6:30 uh, on this Friday, the final Montana. You this know morning what works show. for me when I when it gets to mid, uh, actually about nine o'clock mm -hmm. on uh, New Year's Eve. Yeah, you're. I that's fall about right. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's about how I it. Work. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, today, uh, not um, exciting weather day, but mm -hmm. definitely looking at the potential of some snow mm -hmm. in parts of the area. Temperatures holding into the teens and twenties. Um, maybe that's exciting sure. enough, uh, at least starting things out. Scattered snow showers, mainly on the light side for the valleys. The heavier snow to the mountains. We'll see another little surge of moisture overnight tonight that could make things a little more exciting early tomorrow morning. Daytime highs into the thirties, but we are looking at several rounds of uh, light snow through the morning and early part of the afternoon both east and west of the divide with another round tomorrow we're going to break down that new year's eve and new year's day forecast in just a few minutes thank you very much matt looking forward to it well celebrating the new year is a tradition that's filled with fun but it can also be dangerous a vivid reminder you may have seen this car that was wrecked in a dui accident it's on north 7th avenue currently near the alcohol drug services of gallatin county Gallatin County Sheriff Dan Springer told our Donna Kelly his deputies will be watching for impaired drivers who might be drinking or smoking. That means a little something different for you in law enforcement. What will you do over the weekend? We have a number of overtime shifts that we're filling, so we'll have extra patrols out there just to have a higher presence. Uh, so people know that um, if they see us, they kind of recognize that we make some different plans. There's Uber, there's Lyft, there's lots of different things out there these days for them to get rides home. Mm -hmm. And there used to be a tipsy tow too, and I do have a mm -hmm. call in to, to AAA to see if they're going to do that too. But, but you're right, uh, choose if you're going to be uh, sober and, and choose a, a driver who right. can take over for you. Uh, and then this year, since marijuana is legal, right. that's got to add another whole level to you. Yeah, I think when people think of DUIs, they think of alcohol typically alone. But DUIs can be marijuana, they can be prescription drugs, they can be other, you know, more illicit drugs. So they need to be aware if they're using those things that um, that's also considered driving under the influence. Mm -hmm. And if you see somebody, uh, can somebody call to, uh, what should they call? Should they call 911 if they see somebody they think mm -hmm. is impaired? Yes, if you're, you know, if you're driving, call 911 and uh, they'll ask you a few questions, let them know what you're looking for. Uh, we do appreciate if you're willing to sign a complaint because an anonymous one is a little more difficult for us. But if you're willing to sign, that's more helpful for us. Um, give us an idea of where you are, the license plate, what you're seeing, uh, location's the big one. And we typically get that location right out to the deputy so that we can get there in time. Is there a spike over the holidays usually of impaired drivers? There is. Uh, you know, last year we had about three in just a few hour period. We had a number of um, hit and run crashes, which we also believe were probably DUI also. Uh, but we did, we did not catch those people. Um, there was about 65 calls from midnight, uh, about 9 p.m. to 1, 2 o'clock in the morning, which is a significant number of calls for our sheriff's office. Yeah. Uh, so that was, um, yes, we know that there's going to be a, a big spike, but we do expect that. Sheriff Springer, keeping us safe. Thank you mm -hmm. very much. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And Kelly and Sheriff Springer, thank you very much. Now, AAA says it is not doing tipsy tow rides this year. With recreational marijuana now legal in Montana, law enforcement has to watch out for other impaired drivers. From drinkinganddriving.org, here are some things users are responsible for on the road. With alcohol, you choose to be a driver or a user. Wait at least three hours after smoking marijuana before driving. Wait at least six hours after using edibles before driving and never smoke marijuana while driving and never be a passenger of somebody smoking marijuana. And a number of bison were killed on 191 Wednesday night. West Yellowstone Police Chief Mike Gavigan confirms that 13 bison were killed around mile marker 4 on Highway 191. The chief says one semi truck and two other vehicles were involved. No one in the vehicles were injured. Some of the bison had to be put down because they were so badly injured. Chief Gaffigan says that this accident happened around 6.30 p.m. It was dark and notes bison are hard to see with their dark coats. 
Also, bison do not have reflective eyes. The chief says his officers are constantly trying to move bison off the road. Wednesday evening, they were able to shoot 10 to 14 bison off the road that were still there. And 2022 was certainly an intense year for politics. The Supreme Court changed abortion laws. The midterm election saw Republicans take back the House and Democrats keep the Senate. Not to mention bills involving gun safety, climate change, prescription drugs, and computer chips all passed through Congress. So what will 2023 bring? Our political correspondent Joe St. George has a preview for the new year. The sounds... <laughs> And sights of a changing year. Goodbye, 2022. Hello, 23. Before you head to your New Year's party, remember, politics is going to look a lot different in 2023. There will be more gridlock, more uncertainty, and a whole lot of 2024 announcements. Well, if you find a bunch of political fortune cookies at your New Year's party, there's a good chance if you open one... One political prediction would be fewer major bills from Congress. That's because Republicans control the House starting Tuesday. Democrats will keep control of the Senate. Leaders may be able to pass their own priorities in their own chambers, but once a bill reaches the other, it may not even get a vote. If there's any one political issue that's poised to face more scrutiny from Congress next year, it's the border. Republicans are vowing to make it the first bill they pass in the House. Democrats want a deal to provide legal protections for immigrants already here. What does the next political fortune cookie bring? Well, a big decision from President Biden. While the president has repeatedly said he plans on running for re-election in 2024, he's yet to make it official. One reason? Well, if you ask political observers, the only reason he would even contemplate not running is his age. On Inauguration Day in 2025, Mr. Biden would be 82 if he runs and wins. He would be 86 at the end of a hypothetical second term. Political prediction number three, Republican challengers to Donald Trump. The former president has already launched his 2024 campaign, but it doesn't appear his announcement will clear the field. Big decisions are expected soon from Florida's Governor Ron DeSantis, Wyoming Congresswoman Liz Cheney, Maryland Governor Larry Hogan, former Vice President Mike Pence, and former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. And the last fortune cookie reveals an obvious prediction. The Supreme Court will continue to play a major role in our country. Several high-profile opinions will be issued in 2023. Justices will decide how much race should play in college admissions, and they'll decide the future of President Biden's student loan program. Oral arguments in that case are slated for the end of February. Happy New Year. In Washington, I'm Joe St. George.